In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, amen. Glory be to the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, now and ever in the ages of all ages, amen. Today is Thursday, April the 23rd, 2020, and we continue our journey through the joy of the Holy 50 Days of our Lord's Resurrection Feast. Uh, today's Gospel is from Luke chapter 7, verse 11 to 17. Now it happened the day after that he went into a city called Nain, and many of his disciples went with him, and a large crowd. And when he came near the gate of the city, behold, a dead man was being carried out, the only son of his mother, and she was a widow. And a large crowd from the city was with her. When the Lord saw her, he had compassion on her and said to her, Do not weep. And he came and touched the open coffin. And those who carried him stood still, and he said, Young man, I say to you, arise. So he who was dead sat up and began to speak, and he presented him to his mother. Then fear came upon all, and they glorified God, saying, A great prophet has risen up among us, and God has visited his people. And this report about him went throughout all Judea and all the surrounding region. And glory be to God forever and ever. Amen. So we see the beauty here of uh, the Lord raising the dead. And we see the meanings that are hidden within these verses. So the Lord was being followed by a large crowd on his way into this little town. And he sees this dead man, this young man, the only son of his mother. We see that she was a widow. We see that the bitterness and the grief that she must have been going through to the death of her son. We see how there was a large crowd with her. Uh, to comfort her, to follow with, to follow her to the grave, to the tomb. The Lord had compassion on her, right? The Lord's compassion fails not. The Lamentations of Jeremiah. Jeremiah says, "For through the Lord's mercies we are not consumed; for His compassions fail not; they were renewed every day." So, the Lord told her not to weep, and the Lord wants to wipe away every tear from every eye. Uh, and this is the promise that awaits us in eternity. But even now, while we go through our journey in life, the Lord is with us and is carrying our burdens with us. And He is supporting us throughout the day's events. So it says that He came and touched the open coffin. And those who carried Him stood still because it was a surprise, not to mention the fact that, you know, nobody should stop. So should touch a dead thing or dead person or and especially in the law of Moses at the time so the Lord touched the open coffin and they stood still surprised and he said young man I say to you arise so he was dead sat up and began to speak and he presented him to his mother now the Lord must have thought of many things that he himself was as on the cross reminding Saint John to take care of his mother Saint Mary and telling Saint Mary behold her son these are moments that the Lord was was seeing before his crucifixion and his death on the cross. St. Ambrose and St. Cyril of Alexandria give us some nice meditations on these passages and they say why. What is the meaning of this? Why would the Lord have to touch the open coffin? He could have just, you know, his word was enough. When he went to, to raise Lazarus from the dead, all he said was Lazarus come forth. His word, of course, being the word of God is more than enough to raise this man from the dead. St. Cyril tells us that the Lord touches the coffin to remind us of the power of the Lord God incarnate in the flesh and the flesh of our Lord Jesus Christ has power it's just like that woman who just wanted to touch the hem of his garment that she may be healed and power went out of him to heal her the Lord his power is in his word and his being as our Lord Jesus Christ the Savior of the world who is incarnation brought about power and glory and majesty Saint Ambrose speaks to us about the uh, coffin the wood of the coffin. He says this poor boy or this young man was lying in this wood coffin. The Lord touches the wood. He sees that man could lie dead in this coffin, but the Lord, by touching this coffin, the power of his divinity and the his capability and his love and his joy to change every death to life and curse to blessing, touches the wood and turns it into life. In other words, raises this man from the dead by calling him to rise. Just as the Lord takes the wood of the coffin and takes the meaning of death in that coffin into life by him touching the wood of the cross, by him going up on the wood of the cross and changing the curse into a blessing and taking us from death to life. So the Lord made every situation that was a dead end, a hopeless moment, 
into uh, life and hope and eternity. That wood that was a coffin for one became a cross for another, for our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And he dying on it and descending into Hades rose from the dead and has sat at the right hand of his Father. And this is the message that we preach, the joy and the power of the Lord's resurrection, that nothing can hold our Lord back. No, nothing can stop him from loving us and living for us and raising us from the dead, even the death of sin. So we thank God for these joys and we thank him that we say, Lord, thank you for being our Lord and a Savior who more than wants but is joyful and for the joy that was set before him went all the way to the cross, all the way to that wood so that the wood of a coffin may no longer hold us back anymore. It is only a temporary transition that the wood of the cross became the, the emblem of our victory and the hope of our salvation through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To Him be the glory and the honor now and ever unto the ages of all ages. Amen.